Word of Hope Ministries, where we are loving God, loving all people, and changing the world. Word of Hope Ministries. And now, your host, Dr. D.Z. Cofield. Welcome to Word of Hope Ministry. I'm your host, Dr. D.Z. Cofield, Senior Pastor of the Good Hope Missionary Baptist Church, and I want to thank you for tuning in today. I want to encourage you to learn one thing today, and that's the value of your soul. You ever hear stories of people who find things at a garage sale and maybe pay $2 for it and find out later on it was worth thousands and thousands of dollars. I love the antique road show because people will bring in things that they got from an aunt or a grandparent or found somewhere and they want to find out what it's worth. Sometimes it's worth a little, but sometimes those things are worth a lot more than they expected. They didn't know the value of what was in their possession. And I believe there are many saints today, maybe even you, you don't know how valuable your soul is. So today, I want to help you learn the value of your soul. We're in the midst of our message, knowing your soul purpose in life. Come on, let's get to the message. I hope you're blessed today. For your life. Here's the second thing. Number two, you need to recognize the value of your soul. You need to recognize if you are going to know what your soul purpose in life is, you must recognize the value of your soul. He said, wait a minute, what do you mean value, pastor? Well, there's two things that you need to see. Look at the A part under number two. Your soul is worth more than anything else you have. Your soul is worth more than anything else you have. Look at Mark 8, beginning at verse 36, the New Living Translation. Let's read it together. And what you do, and what do you benefit if you gain the whole world but lose your own soul? Is anything worth more than your soul? 1 Timothy 6, 7, for we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. Here's the problem. We live like all we have is down here. And God says, no, the most important and valuable thing you have is what's going to transcend time into glory. He says, it's your soul. Watch this. While you are focusing on the shape and condition of your portfolio, God says, I'm not interested in your portfolio. I want to know the condition of your soul. He says, what benefit is it is if you gain the whole world and lose your soul? You know, my favorite television station is HGTV, right? Well, I think now my favorite one is the History Channel. Man, I love the History Channel. And, and one of the shows I love is Pawn Stars because you never know what's going to come in that pawn shop. Man, a, a brother walked in there. He came in there with a gold coin. It was in a plastic little pouch, and it had the date 1715 on it gold coin, and he walks in, Rick, owner of the shop, looks at him, and if you've ever watched the show, they start describing the coin. And so he looks at the coin, and Rick says, man, this is really a, a great-looking coin. I would love to have it if I can get it for the right price. So he asks the guy, he says, uh, you want to pawn it or you want to sell it? And the guy says, I want to sell it. He says, where'd you get it from? He said, well, 
We found it in my grandfather's safe. After my grandfather passed, it came to me. And uh, I don't know what to do with it, so I want to sell it. The guy said, well, how much you want for it? He said, I want $2,000. Rick said, wow, $2,000. He said, well, he said, I don't know. He said, if it's, a, if it's real, he says, I have no problem with that. He says, but do you mind if I call in a buddy of mine, call in the expert? He knows everything about these coins, and he can tell us whether it's real or not. I trust his opinion. So the guy comes in to look at the coin. He asks him how much the coin weighs. He tells him the weight. He says, wow, that's the proper weight. He says, as a matter of fact, most of those coins don't weigh that exact amount. They usually weigh less. And he starts pointing at all of the signs and symbols and inscriptions on the coin. And then the man concludes that the coin is authentic. It is a Spanish doubloon that was minted in Spain, but it was dug out of the mines in Peru when the Spaniards were there. So Rick says, all right, he says, well, tell me, how much is the coin worth? And the guy looks at the coin, he says, well, he says, in the condition that it's in, he says, I, I would say this coin is worth about $18,000. <laughs> and the guy said, what? <laughs> Man, he jumped. Now, now, here's my point. He had more value than he thought. And part of the reason he didn't recognize the value of the coin, two reasons. One, it was out of sight. And the second thing, he was ignorant of the value. Let somebody go with me here for a minute. See, see here's, the, here's the reason you don't understand the value of your soul. First of all, it's out of sight. See, you spend more time on your hair than you do on your soul. Mic check. One, two. Mic. Don't get quiet on me. Yeah, you spend more time on the outside with what you can see than what you do on the inside. And God says you don't see it. It's out of sight. And then you don't know how valuable it really is. See, 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 your soul transcends time into eternity. All of the stuff, all of the junk you accumulate, somebody had it before you got it. Somebody's going to have it after you get through with it. Never see a U-Haul tagging behind a hearse on its way to the cemetery because you can't take it with you. 1 Timothy 6, 7 says that you brought nothing into this world. You will carry nothing out of this world. The only thing that you have that will leave this earthly existence and carry over into eternity is your soul. But watch B, watch B. Under number two, your soul will one day be required by God. You talking about how valuable it is? Your soul will one day be required by God. Look at Luke 12, verse 19. And I will say to my soul, soul, you have many goods laid up for many years. Take your ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, fool, this night your soul will be required of you. Then whose will those things be which you have provided? So is he who lays up for treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. I want you to underline that phrase, rich toward God. Rich toward God. Everybody say rich toward God. Rich toward God. See, see, here's the problem. Here's the imbalance in our lives as Christians. Because we have been mistaught, because we have been misinformed, we place more value on the things of this world and are more committed and concerned to being rich towards man than we are being rich towards God. Let, let, let me show you how slick the devil is. We have taken the sin of greed and have sanctified it. So we took the sin of greed, put a religious robe on it, a diamond encrusted cross around its neck, bling bling jewelry on its fingers. And now we call greed prosperity. 
We have more cars than we can drive, more rooms than we can live in, more food than we can eat. But we call ourselves blessed by God because we are prosperous. Now, now let me tell you why it's a theological misnomer. First of all, you don't hear nobody on television preaching about no prosperity in this economy. And the reason is no theology is truly biblical if it cannot be sustained throughout any season and it cannot be sustained throughout any culture. In other words, the Bible is supracultural. That means it rises above culture. So the principles, precepts, and the practices of the Word of God are never limited by or relegated to culture. So when we take our greed and our American capitalistic mentality and we bring those two things together and we claim now we have a new theology and a new word from God, but that cannot translate from one side of town to the other, let alone across the water. Listen, if a theology can't make it across the street or across town or across the water, then it doesn't belong to God. Shame on you if you have believed that you are more blessed by God and you closer to God because you have more debt than the person who rides a bus. Tell me, come see my blessing. No, come see your debt. That's what you come to see your bills. That's what we're coming to see. Look at how the Lord blessed me. No, look at how you got in debt. That's what. See, I submit to you, there are people who are closer to God who ride the bus than who drive by the bus stop. He says, your soul will one day be required of you. This night, fool, he says, I require your soul. <laughs> now, 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 watch this. I, I'm, just trying, I'm just trying to make sense. Watch, stay with me, though. Why would you put more value on something that God doesn't value? Because God doesn't say, uh, look here, I want that, um, that, that, that 500 series. God doesn't say, look, man, uh, I want that, that jewelry. My sister, I want the most valuable thing you have, the thing that costs you the most money that's, that's on your body. He doesn't require your weed. I mean, I'm sorry. No, no, no. Oh, Ooh. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Travis, cut that. Don't put that in. I'm sorry. Y'all looking at me funny. You know that's the most valuable thing you got on right now. You know, come on now. That thing costs you. I didn't know how much them things cost till I watched that, that documentary by Chris Rock, Good Hair. And they showed them sisters putting their weave on layaway. I was like, oh, no, you didn't. Sister put her hair on layaway. Had to get her income tax check to get her weave done. Sister said, I've been waiting all my life to get a weave like this. I was like, wow. God does not ask for any of that stuff that you value. That's the point I'm making. He's not looking for minks. He's not looking for diamonds. He's not looking for any of that. God says the most valuable thing you have is your soul. And the tragedy is what he values the most, you neglect the most. Because you spend more time building your wardrobe than you do your soul. You don't even think about the value of your soul. That's too convicting. Let's move on to the third thing. Number three. <laughs> third thing, you need to realize who has the ultimate power over your soul. Who has the ultimate power over your soul? Matthew 10, 28. Let's read it together. And do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul, but rather fear him 
who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Who has the ultimate power over your soul? Jesus says, here's the problem. You live in fear, but you fear the wrong people. That word fear, phobio, where we get the word phobia from, has two meanings, and I think you can apply both of them here. A fear in terms of frightfulness or being afraid of, and a fear that refers to reverence or respect. I believe you can use either one of those applications here. Because here's basically what Jesus is saying. You are fearful and sometimes respectful and reverential to those who can only touch your body. God says, why do you fear those who can touch the body and end your time but have no power over your eternity? Somebody uh, came to me and was talking to me about some of the situations in the community and things and, and basically said, Pastor, you know, if you want to get on top, right, you know, you just got you just gotta learn how to deal with some folk. You know, you gonna have to kiss some rings and you know, because you know you got some folk in this town that got some powers. You know, and uh, you know, I mean, you doing you doing all right at Good Hope, but you know, I mean, if you really wanna, you know, get out here and make a difference, you know. And I said to him, I said, now, I said, Here, here's what's interesting. I said, and I've learned this the hard way. If God doesn't have it for me, then you can take it from me. But if God has it for me, you can't stop me from getting what God has for me. So I've changed my mentality. I only want what God can give me and what God wants me to have because watch this, if I live based on what you gave me, that means I got to dance to your music whenever you start playing. Because if you gave it, you can take it. Somebody said, wait a minute, Pastor, what does that have to do with me? I I'm trying to help you in here that you need to raise the standards of how you live and who you are going to be accountable to. There's certain values that you need to have that are soul values and not flesh values. Can somebody hurt my body? Yeah, you can hurt my body. You can take me out. But you cannot touch my soul and where I will spend eternity. So who are you going to give props to? Who are you going to respect? Who are you going to give homage? Well, I hope you were blessed today by that message. Yeah, I mean, it, it was really exciting. And you could tell in the sanctuary how people were really moved by what we were sharing. Uh, I want us to go back to Luke chapter 12 for a moment because I think that verse is so critical. Luke chapter 12, uh, and in particular verses 19 through 21. And I will say to my soul, soul, you have many goods laid up for many years. Take your ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, fool, this night your soul will be required of you. Then whose will those things be which you have provided? So is he who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. You know, that mantra, eat, drink, and be merry, man, there are people, that's their philosophy of life and living, right? Eat, drink, and be merry. But God says to this rich man who has stored up all of this wealth and has all of these grandiose plans for the future, you are rich in yourself, but you are not rich towards God. 
Now, some may argue, well, is he talking about salvation or sanctification? And I would submit to you, my brothers and sisters, I don't think it really matters. In that, we know a person who stores up riches on earth apart from a relationship with God is a fool. But what about the person who has accepted Jesus Christ and still lives as if their total life depends on what they have on earth? Some might say that person is an even bigger fool because that person knows God and is failing to live as if God is at the center of their life. What's amazing to me about this passage, and I believe the principle that Jesus is trying to teach his followers, we should not value more what God values less. The most valuable possession you have is your soul. That's the thing that will transcend time and move into eternity, your soul. Your earthly life essence will end when you die, but your eternal life essence will live on. Paul says, absent from the body, present with the Lord. That's not our physical body. That's not our mind. That's not our earthly life essence, our spirit. That's our soul. And so Paul says, man, you need to value that. You need to encourage that. You need to make sure that your soul is prepared, not just positionally, but that your soul is strengthened in your day-to-day -day living, which for me simply means you're living with an eternal focus. You have an eternal perspective. So you are not valuing the things on earth more than you value the things in heaven. Now that whole idea of what kind of theology you're gonna live by, um, I'm sure some of you were probably taken aback by that because man, isn't it amazing when people say, I, I want you to come see my blessing and they're really inviting you to come see their debt. The, the truth of the matter is, man, we value the stuff down here way more than we should and we undervalue the things of God way more than we should. So my hope and my prayer today is that you begin to invert that process. Invert that process so you start devaluing the temporal things of this world that moth will eat, thieves will steal, and rust will corrupt. And you'll start valuing the things that God values, number one, above all else, your soul because that is what the Lord Jesus came and died for, your eternal life essence. We'll be back to close our show in just a moment. Out of 34 international countries and cities, students in the U.S. ranked 14th in reading, 17th in science, and 25th in math. As your child prepares to enter a globally competitive economy, where will you enroll your child to learn the science, engineering, and math needed to compete with children around the world? Our school, the Global Learning Village. Now, before we close, let me take this opportunity to thank you for tuning in again to Word of Hope Ministry. We're here every morning, Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. So after you get your morning news, come on over to the Cube and get some good news. And then on Sunday morning at 6.30. And I wanna thank those of you who have been tuning in regularly. Thank you for your uh, cards. Thank you for your calls. Thank you for your text messages. They really, really mean a lot. If you'd like to follow along with us at the Good Hope Missionary Baptist Church, you can download our app and we would love to see you come and share with us. That's Sunday morning, 7.30 a.m., 10 a.m. and 12.30 p.m. We would love to have you come, 7.30, 10 and 12.30. Don't forget, Christianity and capitalism 
are not the same thing. Let's stop taking greed and sanctify it and call it godliness. The truth of the matter is, God is more concerned about our being than he is about our having. Let's close in prayer. God, thank you for the day. Thank you for this day that you've made. And I thank you for the brothers and sisters, the men and women who are watching today who are about to begin their day and go forward. I pray, God, that you would bless them in a special way this day. Cover them, God, right now. Assign your very best available angels to watch over them. There's somebody who's worrying about what's waiting for them today. I pray, God, that you would put their mind at ease, that they would rest in you, that they would trust in you, that they would rely upon you and your power to intercede on their behalf. Let somebody know today, God, that worrying would do them no good. And if they trust you, they will not worry. And when they worry, they're not trusting. So help them to trust you today. That situation, that circumstance, help them to give it to you, God, and not take it back, but to allow you to do what only you can do. And when you conclude doing your work, God, help us to not try to take credit for what you've done, but help us to give you the glory, to give you the honor, and to give you the praise that you deserve. You are no respecter of persons, and what you've done for others, we know that you can do for us. And you haven't brought us this far to leave us now. So we ask you to bless as only you can. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you.